situation in that um, So we st we'll do the quick feedback on the swap there. Yeah. Do that first. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so just as a, a reprise, uh, you recall that we were going to work everyone uh, in this event uh, very hard. Yesterday we invited uh, all of the participants to fill in a SWOT to identify what they saw as these strengths, weaknesses, threats and opportunities in relation to startups around sustainable chemistry. Um, and let's just give you a quick snapshot of, of what we were hearing. Um, so the feedback that we've done, uh, and, and thank you very much for uh, your staff in particular and us to put this together, uh, doesn't invite too many surprises. Um, I mean, clearly in relation to uh, what we thought were the, the weaknesses and the threats, um, very much what was just coming through here and what Sasha just mentioned. You know, we've got a, a lack of business skills and access to funding and the high initial costs and so forth, and networks that Sonia mentioned. Uh, and I think a, a key point that I think all of us got from John's presentation, the, the culture, the entrepreneurial culture is very different in very different places. Uh, and then the threats, um, again, you know, Sasha and, and others have made the point there, um, that there's a, you know, we're, there are real potential problems in relation to you know, the inertia of large companies, the governmental regulations and so forth. R John mentioned industry risk aversion and the inevitable pushback that you get from companies that have dominated high ground. So, um, back to you, Hannes. I mean, you were involved with the, the folk who were putting together uh, the feedback that we're going to hear shortly. Were there any other themes that came through from them? Well, maybe I just... Um, so, so, so we had these... We, we had, 30 to 40 um, extraordinary people that we worked, on, uh, worked with throughout the last 24 hours. And I mean 24 hours. We worked through the night. They worked through the night, so that was, um, I'm going to introduce you to, to what, they, what they really did before we come to the pitches, which, which, which would be the next session. But we worked with these tremendous people who got into the heads of these different stakeholder groups. And we worked with them, and I discussed with them after, I don't know, they, they worked for 20 hours, and we discussed then the challenges once again. So that was really impressive for me. And then there were several topics that emerged, and some of these topics I brought this to the slide, and um, we also created the web page where we bring it all online as well. So and some of them are very, very interesting. So, so first of all, this network appeared as well, but it's not like a corporate network, but more like a personal network. If a chemist comes out of research, goes into a company, then suddenly there was, this is a citation from one of the team members who said, suddenly I'm temporarily incompetent. Um, I have this overwhelming uncertainty. Suddenly I'm in a situation that I haven't experienced ever before. And suddenly I need a completely new personal network that I haven't had before. And suddenly, so that's so. If we think about networks, it's oftentimes networks of people, and that's 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 really something that emerged. And a topic that came with it is a big topic, which is especially interesting for networking. And it's the trend. They call that the translation issue. And they found out that the problem is that many chemists talk with each other in chemic in chemical language. But the people outside of this chemical, um, chemical industry, they don't have a clue of what you're talking about. And that's, that was really impressive for us because if, if, you, if, you, if, if you're thinking of a startup, a startup has to handle a lot of different people from different, from, from different communities. Like an investor, he has no experience in, in chemistry. Or uh, a partner, which is, who's not from chemistry. So, that's a big problem, and even within chemistry, there are sometimes language barriers between people who are deep in their field talking to other people who are in other fields within chemistry. So, so that was that was pretty impressive. Can, can I just make one final reflection on weaknesses and threats? Um, pick up the point that John made. This is possibly a threat or an opportunity. Um, <clears throat> this misses out the huge potential. Of, of chemists and the chemical sector to optimize its contribution to sustainable development, uh, which, as Mark written all over in large, 
Uh, as the first point, and the second uh, it is the point that, um, and as I said yesterday, unless we achieve sustainable chemistry, we will not achieve sustainable development. So uh, the big threat here is that we actually don't move towards achieving these international goals that are not simply intergovernmental green goals. They are deeply embedded, scientifically assessed environmental, social, and threats to our future, and unless we can optimise that contribution of the sector to addressing those threats and meeting those essential needs, uh, we collectively as uh, humankind will fail. So, what about the opportunities, the bright side? Well, we also have a bright side. Okay, so uh, here uh, some clear things came through, and I think we have heard them in the presentations in the panel yesterday and then again this morning. Um, won't bring those up, but you know, clearly a need for green chemistry uh, as a strength here and the creativity uh, and the potential there for um, on the educational excellence and channeling of that point that was made. And the opportunities here coming through about uh, sustainability and so forth. Cooperation, I think, has been underlined very clearly. And, and also the point uh, that came through as a positive and as a negative, the political support and regulations, which I think clearly need to be yeah. addressed. Uh, what, what else were you? So, so, so the teams where well, cooperation is underlined in throughout every idea. And in, so I hope you agree with me back there with the, probably the teams. They already joined, so um, they're back there. Um, you can have you, you may give them the hands afterwards when when they have the presentation. So there will be still um, there will be still enough of opportunities to give them your hands. But, um, they had a few topics arising, and one of them was, for instance, that if we go and if, if we had this chemie vendor, if we had this industrial change, then it would also incline a change of mindsets. And the change of mindsets, um, they um, they found out, for instance, that suddenly this chemist that work in the industry become entrepreneurs. So they they are they suddenly want to own their own projects. Which would also be a challenge, maybe, for industry. I can imagine. So you you may comment comment on this later on. But um, this is this is going to be to, to be one bright side because if you're working on your own project, then you're really motivated to bring this forward. Also, <clears throat> scientists become a, a, a broader perspective on their work. Like they are more focused on what is their societal impact. Does my technology really reach this society? Does it change anything? Does it change policy? Does it change um, um, the products that we see out there, the processes that we see out there? Out there. It will also in engage with fast innovation cycles, which we definitely need. And we heard from Sonia, startups are the, the way to foster, to, um, to, to, to accelerate our innovation uh, cycles. And the last thing that was also kind of interesting because it came, these, uh, it, it came off several interviews. Yeah, something that I also quote from, from today in the morning. Um, there was someone who said, "Well, the, the, the public out there, they they think when they think of chemistry, they think of, they think of chemistry equals toxic, equals evil." Another one said that when well, there are products out there that are that have the, the label no chemical ingredients, which is nonsense, but it means chemistry is something bad and. The, the opportunity here would be if we had a sustainable chemistry, these labels may disappear, and chemistry is not bad anymore. So that would be that would be a big opportunity, I would say. Right. And, and if I could add one last point on opportunities, um, <clears throat> I had the honour to chair a meeting in Unida uh, in uh, December 2014, and Sonia was present, and I heard her pitch. In fact, I invited her to make the presentation. Paul Nastas was there, and when I heard that pitch. The penny dropped to me, and the penny was there is no place yet in Europe that we might describe as the Silicon Valley of green and sustainable chemistry. Let it be Berlin. Uh, and as far as I can see now, all of the planets, if you like, are aligning. And what I'm sensing here uh, yesterday and today is that, and addressing Sasha's point too, you know, we, we're actually within. Uh, throwing distance of creating a hub here that will begin to address all of the issues that you're facing uh, and which have been highlighted in, in both the threats and the weaknesses uh, in this uh, overview. So don't forget the political and strategic opportunities that that has. Congratulations to you on posting this. Thank you very much. So,
let's come to the main event of what we of what we uh, of what we worked for. So this is some kind of so so this is one ex, uh, one res, uh, part of the result that that uh, that we worked upon. But the teams um, with which we we worked with throughout the last hours, um, they had a very tight schedule. We began yesterday with a public panel session where they got some input from seven different stakeholder groups, uh, which we think um, are going to change or influence this Kimi vendor that we that we've named it. We worked. We start at 12 o'clock to build seven teams of people who have mostly never met before. Uh, within half an hour, they came up with a, with a team with questions that they are going to engage completely for uh, completely. Uh, unknown people from high level uh, decision makers from industry from from politics administration from art from science and so on and so forth and they talked with them about one and a half hours to get an insight to get into their head and to understand them then we worked upon what are the main challenges that arise more and more often and what are what are the goals that these people have to create solutions for one of these challenges or towards one of these goals for this specific person. And these 30, uh, 30 something people, um, so mostly, many of them are PhD students, students, they are startup founders. Um, so it's a variety of different people that came together there. And they worked, like I, like I, like I showed with these different illustrations, throughout the night. They went to dinner with the stakeholder group, got, got another feedback round, they designed throughout the whole night prototypes. They created their value proposition for it for a solution um, until today in the morning when I uh, when when they were still able to talk to me in a proper way. I don't know how they are doing it. So I, we are so, so my co-trainer Andreas and, and me we are doing many of these different events with with tech friends and hackathons. And it's really the work ethic of these people is really out. Outstanding, let's re really say this. So, so they were still able at, at 6 30. We had a discussion, a broad discussion about one hour about the broader scheme, the big impact that, that there is. So it's, it's really, uh, really great. And, and then we went into a final pitch training that they just finished to come to this moment. Within the next hour, hopefully, after our jury completely arrived. So <laughs> we're still waiting for, uh, for instance, for the Minister of Economics and Energy, Brigitte Tsiklis to arrive. Um, so as soon as we, as the jury is completely here, we will start with the, with the pitches. Um, let me give you a brief intro introduction of what what you are supposed to, or what we are going to see. Every team has the chance to get on stage and present within three minutes their solution, their result, and they work they work really hard on this. So 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 we created a lot of ideas. We Created a lot of solutions and filtered these out, and, and they, they 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 really did a lot of this. And you can read this all out on uh, web page www.innovationsmarathon.de, um, where we right now published it on the web. All of the solutions are there uh, are written there in a miniature the management summaries and as well as short videos. And they created these these pitches for three minutes. They present it to you. The jury is getting from me these evaluation schemes, and they are they are obligated to fill these out. Um, a sister of mine is, who would be standing right over there. She's going to to, to pick them up, calculate the the, the 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 numbers, and hopefully in the end come up with a, with a with a winner who is going to um, to to get a prize of. Um, 5,000 euro trip back to Berlin in November to work again on this like, on, on their on their idea um, together with me and uh, other industry people and other other startups they are going to meet um, every one of these stakeholder groups once again to really refine their idea and get new and uh, new impressions. So um, this is going to be our scheme. I am now in the lucky. <laughs> In the lucky situation that our jury has not arrived yet, um, so I would I would um, then I would then in, 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 invite us invite you to, to, to further further um, discuss one of the um, opportunities to strap that we that we've seen so far. 
<laughs> or perhaps could I suggest a plan B? That's also a good idea. And plan B might be we have the whole audience to have an applause meter, as it were. So after each of the three minute presentations, we get a round of applause, and then you make a, a, a judgment as to which one you thought attracted the loudest applause, because clearly we've got an issue now with, with our jury. Um, but I guess. No, it's working. So let's go back to plan A. <laughs> so we're going back to plan A.